Thank you to everyone who can be here live for the full moon meditation. And thank you to everyone who will do this by podcast uh, at your convenience. And happy Holy Week to everyone who is practicing it in the variety of ways that that is done, both in a Jewish way as well as a Christian way. And for the esoteric community, for many people who have a Alice Bailey DK, Master DK background, then this is the first of the three high moons. And so a lot of people around the world are celebrating this full moon in a variety of ways, uh, spiritually as well as with family and tradition. And maybe where you are, there are spring flowers bursting. Um, You know, this beautiful bevy of crocuses here to remind us of the beauty of spring springing forth. The astrology, I wrote a blog post on the astrology, and so I'm not going to repeat a lot of this that was posted a couple of days ago. But very simply, the energy of this full moon cycle, as well as if a child is born under this full moon cycle, uh, like the last full moon, um, which was at the beginning of March, these are intense energies. And these children who are coming into incarnation as they grow into their teenage years and into their adulthood, um, so much will rest on their shoulders, of course. You know, global climate change will have been in motion by that point for a few decades, if not by uh, certain scientists for more than 100 years. And uh, things will start to probably really shift um, around, you know, 2030, 2040 will really shift in our world. So we have that factor. And then we have that all around the world, there is a lot of political fomentation going on of, you know, right or left, or what is the new party? What is the new way? And and we see that with the Aries factor, you see multiple planets in Aries in the 12th house by the full moon chart, which it is full tomorrow morning, a little after eight, around almost 8.30. And so you see that with pioneering, adventure, move on, go forward, break free, all these kinds of ideas with Aries. And also with the strong Capricorn focus with Mars, Saturn, and Pluto, all in Capricorn. This is, um, those two factors, those two cardinal factors, they're really intense energy. And fundamentally, there's is a, what a a breaking through kind of energy involved in both of them. Um, So we want to kind of keep an eye on the world politics, not just America, but the world politics. Certainly if, you know, if there's another mass shooting here in the U S I think it's going to really undermine the strength that the NRA continues to have. Um, there's just a lot of changes that can happen or, or again, be, be seeded. Spring is the time for seeds to begin to sprout that have been laid dormant through the winter, unseen, under the ground. And so there's that factor with this astrology of what has been, again, brewing, fomenting, gelling, gestating. Under in the deep of the earth, in the deep of our psyches as a human, of as humanity, um, in the various countries in which there are changes, um, I think that we also still have some posturing yet to kind of watch on the world scene and on the world scale. But ultimately, humanity must move forward. We're in a new age. It's the old ways are old. They are done. They are dying. And just like, you know, just like most human beings, we, we don't 
we don't move on easily. <laughs> you know, we put up a fight. <laughs> and so these energies that we're having um, are both the ones of, you know, what's still entrenched and how it will fight and for its limitations, of course. And what is the visionary possibilities that are in the heart and the mind of human beings as we allow ourselves to venture forth into the heart? Because the heart is the true mind. And only with the heart, its equanimity, its visionary possibilities, its inclusivity and universality can the mind and its genius actually be used for its genius instead of be used for all the things that it is used for that keep us and the world limited so it's very powerful energies are are around and of course for the holy week for everyone that is celebrating it in a traditional uh, or religious way the passover on the left and uh, two images from christianity palm sunday celebrated last sunday and then the resurrection which will be celebrated this sunday so uh, you know i put these images here for our meditative contemplation that is to say the exodus the story of the exodus and passover the, the phrase, let my people go, is a very powerful contemplation. It applies today just as it did, you know, thousands of years ago. And we can remove it very easily from the particular tradition and the particular world scripture that it was originally given in. Um, for us to think about and contemplate for ourselves individually, for our families, for whatever group of people we want to, of what is binding us, what is being lorded over us, in what ways do we need to support one another in, in, so that we all can move forward, we all can be free and out of bondage. What are the various forms of bondage? Such good pondering there. And equally so, on the Christian side, um, who is Christ? What is Christ? Uh, what was the message that was brought and how was it changed? Um, why was there a celebration and then everything that followed upon the celebration? So again, there's so many deep ponderings here. What does resurrection mean? What does it mean for you in your life? What wants to be reborn? Again, I would highly suggest that we remove these ideas and phrases from the tra religious tradition that they came from and the culture and its time frame that they came from and ponder these things now in our life. How do they apply to us? What insight can they offer us? What insight can they offer humanity? You know, these, these phrases cycle down through the ages because they still hold value for us as human beings, regardless of the tradition that we hold or keep sacred or find meaningful. So as we move into our meditation, I chose this image because to me it is a um, what a an internalization, I guess, of the pillar of fire, which of course is on the left and features strongly in the Exodus story, and each of us of course, has this pillar of fire inside us. It's called the Anta Karana, and it's called the Shishomna in Sanskrit. And, you know, we all have this. Um, and how can we um, not only access its power, 
but what is the wisdom needed in all of us to access that power? And if we can discover the wisdom inside our heart and then access this tremendous power that is within, what good could we bring to the world? So that's why that image is here. Uh, kind of, a, again, a, a morphing, a transmorphing of, of the pillar of fire. And then equally so, the pillar of fire is, is a singularity, just like it was in the Exodus story. It was a singularity. And if we only access our own wisdom and then access that internal um, blazing light inside us, well, okay, that might, you know, bring us happiness or bring us goodness. But what about the rest of the world? So, of course, part of the story of all of Holy Week and the variety of ways that people hold it is that it's about the world. We are a collective. And all of the collective of humanity is again, bound by a variety of troublesome, limiting um, thought forms, as well as habits, as well as just limitations just by being in physical dimension. So if we all were to access more of our own inner light, what would that look like in our world? And of course, Every time we meditate, that's ultimately what we are meditating upon, is how to bring forward our light and how to help the world transform into the planet of light that it is at essence. And so we smile. And we take a long, slow, deep, breath and initially we just settle together breathing in and breathing out With a breath, we alight our heart and we connect heart to heart with a golden band of light. Envision that golden band of light being made of the most profound light and that it scintillates with fiery energy because it is so pure. And then envision that light of the heart, its golden ring that we have created among us, that it ripples out into and through the whole world.
while that continues to ripple out from the heart. Alight the base center. And let us connect our root center to one another with a golden band of light. Feel the root center and our connection emanate ripples of energy down into the earth as well as out into the world and into and through all humanity. We can already feel how powerful the energies of this full moon are, which is one of the reasons why we've added the root center, because these are very powerful energies. Now with the breath, we alight the Ajna center, and we connect Ajna to Ajna with a golden band of light. And before going forward, once again, simply alight the heart, then the base, and let those two, let their power be felt very fully.
generate a light within the heart like the pillar of fire so it can be as simple as an upward pointed flame that is inexhaustible that cannot be put out And little by little, enter a deep meditation such that you are this flame of the heart and that this flame is supported by the ground of being, which now is online, so to speak, because of our root center. And that you are abiding in a clarity and a pristine awareness, being this flame of the awakened heart.
and feel how this flame of the heart lights the way for all beings, that it is unconquerable and therefore absolutely fearless. And as we stand in or become this flame of the heart, there's an invincible quality to it and a deathless quality to it as well, like always fresh, always youthful, always powerful. But this power is compassion and it's light. And now visualize that this light, this flame of compassion, this power, a light within all of humanity to lead us, to guide us forward into the new day into a new age, into a new way with our planet, a new way with ourselves, fearlessly. That the power and the light of compassion guide us.
Aries is an energy of radical. Just as spring and the spring equinox brings forward radically so the new shoots and the new flowers and the buds of spring and the sunlight elongates our days and everyone feels fresh and new. There's a radical quality about it. And so similarly so, imagine and visualize humanity finding the radical qualities of compassion and the wisdom that accompanies that compassion to create and recreate whatever is necessary to move forward in our way in the world. We have no idea what a new age really means. It's been a long time since the last one. But it is new. And it is fresh. And so we must also meet it with that Aries, fresh, pioneering. And even with the fool, the fool is not a fool. The fool is brand new. Unadulterated, not clinging to the old, ready to step off the cliff, fully understanding that flight, yeah, he can walk in the air. So let us complete with a vision in our minds of not anything specific other than the compassion and light and daring of the heart that humanity is growing into and must, just as a baby must grow into a child and the child grows into an adult. And so we breathe together as one with all humanity. And we complete. Thank you again. It's a powerful cycle. So hold yourself in that power, the power of freshness, newness. Feel your own transformation 
and what is possible as we make simple changes within ourselves that we also feel the freedom in letting go the past, in letting go that which limits us and we know that it limits us. Feel the freedom in that. Let yourself go in that regard and feel yourself transformed, even transfigured as a result. Love you all. Create your day.